Hello, welcome to this video. This is 4 3, uh, part 3 of graphing a function in its inverse. In this video, we are going to specifically talk about the cubic functions and graphing their inverse, which is the cubic root functions. All right, and if you've been paying attention, the past couple of videos we've talked about domain. What's the domain of these functions? Is it restricted? Is it not restricted? Um, and for inverse functions, right, x to the first, sorry, uh, linear functions, x to the first, the domain was not restricted. You could plug in any value, right, from negative infinity to uh, positive infinity. But with quadratics, we had to go ahead and restrict the domain so that our inverse was a function, okay? And um, we're going to talk about cubic functions, and they are similar to linear functions in that their domain uh, is not restricted. Any value can be plugged in from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. Now, why? Well, let's go ahead and look at that. All right, so in this, um, I, this concept here, it says the inverse of a cubic function, f of x equals x cubed, is the cube root function, f inverse of x equals the cubic root of x. The domain of the cubic function, f of x equals x cubed, does not need to be restricted in order to create an inverse function. That is a function. Now here is why. The cube root of a non-negative real number is always a unique, which means there's only one, uh, non-negative real number. Okay, so if I plug in a negative number, I get a specific negative number out. The cube root of a negative real number is always a unique negative real number. Sorry, I flipped that. So that's a negative number. If I plug in a negative number, I get a, a specific negative number out. If I plug in a positive number, I get a specific positive number out. So therefore, each value of the domain um, will be exactly one range value. Okay, pretty much saying you don't need to restrict the domain, all real values. Let's go ahead and look at our first example. Here it says graph the function f of x equals x cubed and f inverse of x. So again, the very, very first thing that we want to do is we want to graph our line y equals x. Okay, and remember that's a dashed line um, that's going to go through the middle like this. Okay. Dash, 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 dash. All right, so there's y equals x. Um, now what we want to do is go ahead and graph our function f of x. Now f of x, um, this is x, and the outputs are x cubed. This is f of x. Now, if you remember back from Accelerated Math 2, you should know the cubic function, x to the power of 3. Um, it kind of looks like a, a squiggly line, okay? And I'll, I'll just refresh your memory. The domain values that, that we pick are very, very specific because if I, if I multiply a number times itself three times, it's going to grow really, really largely, right? So the, the middle value um, that we tend to pick is always zero. Now, this will change. I'll put zero smack dab in the middle here for a second, um, and then I'll, I'll show you why I'm doing this. But if I, if I cube zero, right, zero cubed is zero. So then we tend to, to work out to the side two values. So I'll go one less. That's negative one. What's negative one times negative one? Positive one. Now times negative one, negative one. So I get this value. Okay, then um, another one, one less, which is negative two. Negative two times negative two, positive four. Multiply by negative two, negative eight. So if I plug in negative two, we get negative eight out. Okay, and we'll do the same thing. One cubed is one, two cubed is eight. So we get these specific values, zero, zero, one, one, and negative one, negative one. Okay, negative two, negative eight and positive two, positive eight. Okay, so it looks something like this. Okay, and I put arrows on the end because again, our domain is not restricted, right? I'm going out all the way um, for all x values all the way to infinity and negative infinity. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and plot the inverse of this. So here's x, here is f inverse of x. And again, all we do, how do you find an inverse? You switch x and y, right? It's written on the whiteboard right behind me. Okay, so negative eight, negative two, negative one, negative one, 
zero, zero, one, one, eight, and two. And then again, this is the cubic root of x. And we'll look more at these, uh, these functions in a, a later unit called the radical um, unit. Okay, so negative eight, negative two is here, negative one, negative one, zero, zero, one, one, and eight, two. And this looks something like this. Okay, and it's kind of cool. Um, in in the middle area here, you get like that double helix kind of situation going on, right? It looks like DNA. Yeah, I don't really know much about DNA. That's my wife's department, okay? Um, but there is our inverse. Don't forget, you need to label. This is F inverse of X, right? Cubic root. And then here is F of X, which is a cube root function, okay? So there's it. there it is again. Remember, right? Pl plot your line. Y equals X, that's step one. Step two, graph your function. Step three, graph the inverse, switch X and Y. Step four, make sure they're labeled. Step five, you're done, okay? I think step five was actually labeled. Um, next example. Here we go, graph the function H of X equals X plus one cubed plus, uh, and H inverse of X. Okay, so again, step one, I'll make sure that I have my line y equals x. Again, what's the purpose of y equals x? Well, this is kind of an imaginary line. Um, it's not an asymptote. I know it's dashed. It's not an asymptote. This is a, a kind of a reference line. What's a reference line? Well, we refer to it, um, and we're just ensuring are our graphs right. If our graphs are right, the, the inverse and a function are going to intersect um, on, that, on that line y equals x. Okay, So there's y equals x. Um, next step, x, and then h of x. I'm going to go ahead and graph this. Now, I put the, on the last example, notice I, I put 0 in red right here, and I did that because that was our, our middle value or our starting point kind of for that function. Now, why did I do that? Well, I did that because of our h value. Our h value is 0, and again, remember h value is always paired with our x, so x minus h cubed. Okay, so if I look at this function, Notice that we have an h value that is negative 1. That means my graph is shifting to the left, negative 1. Why is this important? Well, I just mentioned it, our function values grow really, really largely if, if, our, um, if our x values are big, okay? So I want to pick a value that, that's going to be able to fit inside our, our window here, our graphing window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick negative 1 as our starting value. Okay, now why do I do this? We'll check what the output is. If I plug in negative one, what's negative one plus one? Zero. Okay, zero cubed, zero. All right, so at negative one, zero, here is our middle value. And again, I'll pick one value less, that's negative two. Okay, and then another value less, that's negative three. So negative two, okay, I'm gonna plug this in. Negative two plus one, that's negative one. Negative one cubed, negative one. I'll plug in negative three. Negative three plus one, that's negative two. Negative two cubed, negative eight. These output values should seem familiar, right? They're the same output values. Um, they're just, everything's just shifted to the left one. Okay, so I'm gonna pick one value bigger, which is zero, and another value bigger, which is one. What do you think we're gonna get when we plug these values in? I'll let you guess. Okay, that's a good guess, but now let's see. So what's zero plus one? One, one cubed, one. Wow. You got it. One plus one, two. Two cubed, eight. See, I knew you knew these points. Okay, so, and we get a, a function that looks like this. Okay, so one, eight, there we are. Negative three, negative eight. Okay, and again, this function looks something like this. Okay, um, it's, worth, it's worth noting too, in this area of the graph, um, don't play connect the dots. Really, you should have a, a smooth curve through this area. And um, I want it to look something like this. So you're gonna pass through this point and you're gonna curve through this point and then curl through, through that point there, okay? I will dock points if you just play connect the dots, if it's a straight line through there. That's not how the function is, okay? Really, so um, like on, on this function, you should get this, this double helix um, kind of look going if, you're, if those three points are on there, right? So it should look curled.
All right, so going back to this one, um, here's our graph. Now what we have to do, we just have to, to graph our inverse, okay? And I'll put it in green, so x, h inverse of x. Okay, I'll switch my x and y values. One, hey, okay. So negative eight, negative three, one, hey. It's freaking out on me, one, two, three. Okay, negative one, negative two. Zero, negative one. One, zero, and eight, comma, one. Okay, so draw a curve, and again, a curl, curl, and there we go. Okay, so this is h inverse of x, this is h of x, and there's our function. All right. Okay, so again, the takeaway from this example is just your starting point. Pay attention to if you have an h value. If you have an h value, you're going to have to shift, um, and this generally will only occur with the cubics, okay? Um, linear functions, you're going to plot your b value and use your slope. With quadratics, they're going to tell you specifically what x values to use. This only occurs in these ones. Here's a practice problem. Um, I want you to go ahead, you need to practice this, and pause the video. I'll show you the answers in a second. All right, hopefully you did this one. Here is the solution. All right. Okay, hopefully you learned something in this video. We graphed uh, cubic functions and their inverse cubic root functions. Um, remember, if our, we, if our h value is present, we have to shift our graph, and that kind of changes the x values that we plug into our function. All right, catch you next time. Peace.